Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. If you have seen what's happening with data science community recently, you might have noticed this pandas versus non panda solution for reading CSV. So it has been quite viral and uh, there are pe people taking sides. But what I would suggest is that it's always better for us to learn everything from every side rather than simply taking side, we can leverage this situation. And for that, I'm picking up one particular tweet from Abhishek Thakur, where he had actually mentioned different solutions for uh, reading CSV uh, for the assignment that he has uh, posted online. So the assignment goes like this. So you have got a folder and then you have got 100 CSVs, 100,000 CSVs on that folder. You have to read all the CSVs, combine them into one CSV, and then you have to save it uh, with the same header. So the good thing is uh, the file names are very organized and then every single file uh, shares the same header. So there are different solutions that are posted and we are going to exactly see the same thing on Google Colab. So all the codes that I'm going to show you, it is exactly copied from this uh, tweet thread. So I would like to thank Abhishek Thakur for posting the solutions. I've also added a couple of other solutions, but yeah, primarily the solutions from Abhishek Thakur and uh, there is one more solution from uh, Jonathan Chang. So that's what we're going to see in this video. Let's see how it works and what is the most efficient solution. Like I said, uh, the primary objective of this video is uh, to learn what are the different ways to read multiple CSVs, combine them and save them into um, another CSV. Uh, so let's just get into the video. So the first thing that we need to do is I'll share this Google Collab in notebook. So all of you can just um, clone it and then uh, practice with this thing. So the first thing is I'm, I'm cloning the folder that uh, Abhishek Thakur has posted. So CSV test is the name of the folder uh, repository. So I'm just cloning the repository. Once, once I clone the repository, you can see that the repository is available uh, within my current environment. So the first solution that we're going to look at is using pandas. I'm not going to run this code because it takes a lot of time to run. So I'm just going to leave it uh, with, I don't even have the time because uh, it was running a lot of time. My collab environment stopped running. So pandas solution. So the, this is a very simple way. So we are using glob for uh, the file path, uh, the reading the directory structure. So time, we are starting the time. So the first thing that we are trying to do is we are taking the names of all the files. So all files have the names of all the files and we are reading files one by one. And while we read, uh, we are also appending it in a list. So you can see that there is an empty list and then uh, we are adding uh, each and every, every data frame that we are reading, we are appending it to this list. And then finally, we are using concat, pandas concat function to concatenate everything. And then finally, we are saving it. While this is a good solution, um, I think most people would uh, probably go with this solution because it's uh, it's more readable. Uh, it goes step by step. The second solution using pandas, uh, which is a slight modification of this, is more Pythonic, I would say, um, because it reduces the number of lines. Um, but maybe it, it may not be straightforward for beginners because um, it uses list comprehension, but uh, again, it's a good solution. So instead of creating an empty list and appending it, what we are doing here is we are using uh, uh, pandas concatenation, the same, same thing, this one, the same thing we are using it here, but we are doing a list comprehension. So uh, instead of running a for loop here, we are just, uh, sorry, uh, instead of running a separate line of uh, append, and uh, reading. So what we are doing is we are iterating through all the files and then we are reading it. And while we are reading it, everything goes inside here and then we are concatenating it. So it is exactly the same thing as the first solution. But like I said, it's more Pythonic because uh, it, it uses list comprehension. But, or if you say that if it is more readable, it's Pythonic, then you can probably go with the solution. So while uh, these two solutions are using pandas, the next solution uses Dask. So Dask is quite popular in uh, the world where you have got large data frames. So when you have a huge data frame, maybe when pandas is really difficult for you to work on so, or, or, or uh, to give you cases like uh, if you have got a Databricks notebook and you have got a very large uh, um, pandas uh, file, uh, sorry, sorry, tabular file, then you might need to use a uh, Dask there or you would be already using Dask there. So the good thing, the good thing with Dask is uh, you can specify the file format or the path, the pattern, and then it would read all the CSVs in one shot. So whatever you are doing here with the glob, so this, this entire thing that you are doing, defining the path and then saying that I want to read all the files and then using a for loop to iterate all the files, 
Dask does it uh, by itself. And uh, Dask is actually quite efficient in a big data environment, like if you have got Spark or anything. But what we see in this case is Dask is not efficient. So here you could see the Panda solution ended up with uh, 440 seconds, but the Dask solution took almost three times more than that, which is um, 1380 seconds. So uh, one caveat that I would like to highlight here is my uh, collab environment um, went idle quite a few times while this was happening. So I don't know if that has any effect with, uh, with the, the total amount of time that I've got. But again, Dask actually took a really, really long time. So um, it, it is also because I'm writing it as CSV. So it might change if I'm writing it as a Parquet file or a, a, a different file format that uh, that usually, you know, is a, the, the norm in big data world. But yeah, this again, it has, uh, it is a highly abstracted solution. So you just need one single line of code to read CSV. So you are not going to be bothered about um, Glob. You are not going to be bothered about uh, a for loop to iterate, uh, but this works well um, uh, as a note. If you have a file um, name structure that that has a structure, so for example, if you have got something like date and then uh, different dates, again you can use it like this. You can say something like this. So it is quite well. So it works very well. So it's a solution that again you should probably explore it. So Dask data frame. Uh, you just have to import Dask data frame and then read it. And then finally to csv to save it but again uh, it's an expensive solution in terms of the time it takes for it to run so the next solution is we are going to use simply the inbuilt python file um, io um, functions so we are going to simply read it as a text file and write it as a text file so there is a, so if you if you are familiar with csv for those who do not know csv stands for comma separated file uh, comma separated values a CSV is simply a text file where each column value is separated as comma and the first row is the header. So that's what CSV is. So, so if you if you open CSV on a VS code, so that's what you would see. So that's what you're going to do here. But uh, what the one caveat here is that you need to specify the column name. So you need to like give the column names for it to write and uh, and the the thing what I'm doing here is because probably I'm a little bit lazy to manually type this. I'm doing another simple hack again. That is another different way of reading a CSV file. So I'm using CSV package, which is again an inbuilt package in Python. Um, at least if you're using Python three, this is a Python three ish. If this is a syntax that you would follow. So I'm reading the CSV in read mode and then I'm using the reader function to read the CSV file and I'm just printing the first line. So the first line is my header. So the, my header is getting printed. So if you if you actually see uh, it as a machine learning data frame, then you have got uh, the variables um, probably for features. And then you've got the class variable, the target variable. So this is I'm just simply using it to get the column names. You don't have to do this. You can manually do it. But like I said, uh, I don't want to manually sit and type f underscore zero f underscore one so i'm just using it for that but this is again another valid method for you to read csv using the csv package but here we are simply using the uh, inbuilt uh, file uh, io operations so what we are doing is after we specify the column name everything else remains the same so uh, you have glob uh, for a directory uh, parsing and then you have time for time tracking and then you give the column names and uh, we read the output C. So we are saying open output CSV in the write mode and you start writing. And what you want to write is the first you want to write the column names. After you write the column name, you're writing string actually. After you're writing the column names, you're going to write more text. This is like this is the first line that you are writing and uh, you, you are separating it by commas. So columns separated by commas right into the first line and then you get a new line. And then your new line starts uh, where you start parsing the files. So you take all files and uh, individual files, you open everything and uh, you do enumerate, which will give you the content and also an index value. And if you, you say that if the index value is more than zero, then you start writing out one line by line, like every line for every uh, CSV file that you have got in the, in the folder, uh, you would start uh, writing it. So you. I think it's about 100k CSV, right? Uh, so 
for all the 100 k csva dot start writing and this is really a very good and efficient solution i think this is where um, the uh, the entire controversy of pandas versus no pandas is there so if if what if your crux is what you need is efficiency so probably you would need to um, um go slightly you know um closer to the base python um you know the inbuilt functions or cython so something like that 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 talks uh, closer to the machine so you can have a solution that can be more efficient so for example if if i'm working with iot data and then i'm going to get uh, thousands and thousands of uh, csv files for every minute or um for every uh, every uh, hour or something then i would uh, i would probably not prefer using pandas in that case where my batch file is going to run for heck lot of time what if something goes wrong because when i'm going to do automation i want something that is more efficient and this is really an efficient solution and this is very well suited for it but probably i'm a data scientist and i'm going to just analyze data um so i don't mind uh, just reading data for like i'll just start reading it and then go take a coffee and come then i wouldn't mind pandas so i think uh, what we need to focus on is where uh, every solution fits in and uh, this is definitely a very good solution if you have a large amount of data especially when you deal with iot server logs all those things so this is definitely uh, good for it and that's where we should start using it and then the final solution that we have got is uh, uh, the final solution that we have got is using mmap so it's a memory map uh, mmap stands for memory map so wherever you have got byte array this is this is again a good um, package to use for example if you want to do uh, rejects search using re package uh, library in python so this is again a very good solution so to give you a context the previous solution that we used uh, it was 19 seconds uh, as opposed to the 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 dask solution the dask solution almost took 100 times more uh, close to 100 times or i should say 90 times more uh, time than uh, the inbuilt python solution but uh, this is like simplest way to write a code it is not the simplest way but again this is the most efficient way and that's where the trade off is and if you look at the mmap solution so everything remains same so you have the path defined you use glob to parse the directory files and then the only uh, uh, change that jonathan has added here is sorting the files because when you when you read the files the files could uh, could be in a different order uh, so like probably like 10th file in the first order first or a 100th file or a 1000th file so the order would not be same so this is this is simply to say uh, because the file names are um, because the file names are ordered in uh, ordered with the numbers so now you can leverage that to arrange the file names so that's what is happening here really so you have uh, the all files have files in uh, different orders file names and this is where we are sorting it so that the file names are in the right order so let me just close it in case if it loads we can see otherwise uh, it let it be so after you load the files uh, after you sort the files in the ascending order now uh, we have to open output file in the right mode the same thing what we did here the exact same thing what we did here we are doing it here we are opening the the output file csv in the right mode and then we are enumerating through all the files and if the first if the the file is uh, un, uh, yeah this is a main function so you can look look uh, look online for the map functions um, arguments so the first argument is uh, your the, the file uh, and uh, the second argument is uh, i think the uh, the length so you can see if uh, the first um, by by default it defaults to zero so if you skip when the first file uh, that is what is zero right so it then you skip it you just write um the the first line and then you skip it like uh, because you need the header right so you write whatever you read and skip it and then from everything else you just uh, start writing it and then finally you complete uh, complete the writing and then you just close the file and then finally if you see the efficiency so 13 seconds so this is the most efficient solution again like i said you can you can just look for a uh, mmap online i would also link uh, the mmap function in the description but if you notice uh, mmap is the most efficient solution of all and uh, yeah uh, so if you if you are looking for the most efficient solution for reading multiple CSVs and uh, 
concatenating them, combining everything, and then saving it into one final file. So MAP is the most efficient. So this solution has been provided by uh, Jonathan. Um, yes, Jonathan Chang. So I would uh, link Jonathan's gist in the description. So if you have uh, any questions, you can probably go to the gist and raise an issue or um, comment. So Jonathan would. Uh, would be happy to help i think so once again to quickly sum so we looked at solution using pandas dask python's inbuilt file io and a map so a map and file io uh, did a great job uh, on uh, this google collab environment dask uh, is the most um, simplest code to write but um, again it took the most amount of time for the entire process to happen so we just write hundred thousand csvs so um, like I said before, instead of um, instead of taking sides about which one is right, which one is not right, it's always good for us to um, learn more things. Uh, learning never ends. So if you if you like to be versatile and uh, you know be more efficient in the way that you code, you learn everything. And uh, this is my attempt to bring you the solutions that Abhishek Thakur has posted online. So once again, thanks to Abhishek Thakur for sharing this solutions which uh, helped me in making this video i hope this video was helpful to you in understanding different ways to read multiple csvs in python uh, and also to write a, a final csv if you have any comments please let me know in the comment section otherwise i would really appreciate if you could um, give a thumbs up and share this video with your friends uh, or at least people people who are part of this um, uh, hot uh, take topic and um, please subscribe if you like the channel and uh, yeah, give me suggestions. Until next video, uh, take care of yourself. See you.